back to my video and in this video we'll be doing a complete walkthrough of the May 2019 paper and this is focusing on paper 1H of the international or IGCSE syllabus for Edexcel okay and for you guys who are new to my channel and new to my videos well, we always go through the whole paper and I basically do a complete walkthrough and a breakdown of every single question yeah so literally showing you guys the ropes how to do things quickly and efficiently and, and you know try to use your calculator skills because this one is like highly recommended. You should always use your calculator, even for the easy markers, yeah? Trust me, you don't be dropping any single marks. But yeah, let's scroll down and see what we have. So as always, in every single paper, you're given a formula sheet. And then we're just looking at the high tier, yeah? And the good thing is, they pretty much give you all the best formulas, you know? They give you the triangle formulas, quadratic equation, which is like literally so important, areas of trapeziums, volumes, and yeah. So all the hard ones are here. They're missing a couple, like a couple ones, you know. I'm not gonna lie. There is a few ones they're missing, but frankly, they're not too bad. Okay, these are the hard ones to memorize. So, without further ado, guys, let's just jump into the first question here. Yeah? So, what do we have? Number one. So show that four and two thirds divided by one whole and one ninth equals the right hand side. So for these kind of show that questions, the trick is when it comes to any fraction problem is to rewrite this mixed fraction as improper. Okay. And this is how we do it. To convert this first fraction to a proper a single unified fraction, I would always multiply the whole number at the bottom, so 4 times 3, which is 12, and add it to the top. So 12 plus 2 is 14. And then we copy the bottom, so 14 over 3. Next, divide. And then repeating for the second one, you've got 1 times 9 is 9, plus 1 is 10, so it'd be 10 ninths. Now, because you're dividing fractions, you always should change it to a multiplication sign here. So that's usually a trick. Go from divide to times. And to do that, all we do is literally copy the first one, change this to a times, and then when you do that, you must flip the second fraction. So 10 over 9 becomes 9 over 10. And that's it, guys. And all you got to do here now is literally just whip out your calculator. Just do 14, uh, what's it called? 14 over 3 times 9 over 10. And when you do that, guys, you're literally going to get a fraction which says 21 over 5. And you're pretty much done here. All you can do now is literally um, just write the final step. Because what they ask you now is how many 5s go into 21. Well, you can kind of see that you've got 4 holes and you've got one fifth left over. Or just copy the answer. And then you're done. So, number 2 now. It says that Jelena left her home at 10 a.m. to cycle to a park. On her way to the park, she stopped at a friend's house and then continued her journey to the park. Okay, so that's kind of what the whole distance time graph is about, yeah? Like, this is our home right here. So it's always good to label. Your home begins here. And it tells us that she cycles to the park. So we're just going to assume that, okay, oh yeah, and she stops at a friend's house. So we can kind of assume that because she ain't moving here, this must be her friend's house. Okay, so somewhere on that place. Friend's house. And then the park is definitely at the top here. Park. Okay, here is the distance times graph for a journey to the park. Cool. So, on her journey to the park, did Jelena cycle at faster speed before or after she stopped at her friend's house? Give a reason for your answer. So, all they really want to know is which line is more slopey. Okay, which one has a greater gradient or gray slope? Now, to find the gradient of a line, it's actually not too bad. All you do is just find, and then we can just write here, the change in y over the change in x. And by the way, guys, the gradient refers to the speed, yeah, so the speed s. Now, let's just pick two points. I'm going to pick the gradient from here to here. So we can say that, well, using the change in y, it's going to be the change in distance. So from 0 to 15 is 15. And the change in time is from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So that's one hour. So you can kind of see that 15 over 1 is um, 15, okay? So she traveled at 15, what, meters per second, I guess? Is that her speed? 50 meters per second, no, 15 kilometers per hour, 15 kilometers per hour, that's the speed from to her friend's house, whereas from her friends to the park, again, just pick two points, we pick this one and that one, yeah, so just looking at the distance, she was at 15, she went all the way up to 24, so she traveled 9, yeah, so we can say that the speed for this one was 9 over, and then we know the time it took was from, what is this, 11.15, all the way up to 12. So that's 45 minutes here. 
And because you're working in hours, 45 minutes is the same as 45 minutes over 60. That's basically the hour equivalent. Now, if you put this in your calculator, so you're going to have basically 9 over that fraction, you should get exactly, uh, what's it called, 12 kilometers per hour. So the answer would be, um, she actually rode faster at uh, between her home to her friend's house. Whereas between the friends to the park, it was a bit slow by three. So that's what you'd write. You just write these figures and you're done. Now for the second part, it said Jelena stayed at the park for 45 minutes. Okay, so let's just put that there for a second, yeah? You're at the park and we know that, you know, every little block is 15 minutes. So she must have stayed up to here or something, yeah? So that's, what's it called? Yep, 12, 45, 45 minutes. She then cycled without stopping at a constant speed of 16 kilometers per hour from the park back to her home. Okay, so this is just like a quick thing, going from the park straight to the home. So let's have a look. 16 kilometers per hour, yeah? You're at 24 right now. So that means like currently, if you use the speed equals distance over time, we know that there's 24 kilometers to get to home. So what we could do, we can write, put, put T as a subject. So to do this, always multiply T across and divide by S. So you have something like time equals distance over speed. Well, we know the distance from the home is 24 kilometers. We know she traveled at 16 kilometers per hour. So dividing both these numbers, you should get a nice uh, time of 1.5 hours. Okay, so it took her one and a half hours to get home. Okay, just keep that in mind for a second. Um, blah, blah. Show all this information on the distance time graph. Okay, so we have to plot this. That means from here, you're going to go one and a half hours. So if we're at 12.45 right now, let's write 12.45. And you, it takes you an hour and a half to get home. So from 12.45, add an hour, it'll be um, 1.45 p.m. And then add a half an hour, it'll be 2.15. So she's going to get home around here. Ooh. So what you should do, guys, is use a, a ruler. Yeah? But because I don't have a ruler, I'm just going to do like a little quick dot line. Yeah. Yeah, so it should be a, a nice straight line. And that should cover this part. Now, for C, we need to work out Jolina's average cycling speed in kilometers per hour for the complete, oh, the complete journey to the park and back. Do not include the times when she was not cycling in your calculation. Okay, in other words, don't talk about the times where you are not moving, like the dark red lines. So we asked ourselves, all right, how far did she travel altogether and how long did it take? So what we can say, we can say that the speed equals the total distance over the total time. Well, if you think about it, we know that the park was 24, kilom uh, 24 kilometers away. And also to get home is another 24 kilometers. So double that, you should get 48 kilometers, right? Now time-wise, um, we know we should start at 10 a.m. She arrived at 2.15 p.m. So that's about 4 hours and 15 minutes. So you can say that's 4 hours and 50 minutes. So that's basically 4 plus... 15 over 60, yeah? However, we need to remove the times that she did move. So she didn't, she stayed at friends for what? 15 minutes. At the park for 45 minutes. 15 plus 45 is an hour. So you can subtract an hour. So essentially, it's just going to be 3 hours and 15 minutes she spent. So putting that in the calculator, well, 3 plus 15 over 60, that's 3.25, guys. 3.25 hours. So therefore, our average speed was 48 over 3.25. Two five hours and yeah and then again smashing on your calculator you should get an average speed of approximately where is it uh, and i don't know maybe they want one decimal place on it to one decimal place it should have been 14.8 so 14.8 kilometers per hour and yeah that seems about right i think because you know she started kind of like at 15 over here dropped to 12 and went to 16 so the answer has to kind of fall somewhere between those numbers but yeah, that's number two done. So let's move on to three. All right, algebra. I actually love algebra. So 3a, simplify e to the 9 divided by e to the power of 5. Well, when you're dividing terms, you just subtract the powers. So 9 take away 5, guys, is just e to the 4. And that's it. B, simplify y squared or bracket up to the power a. Well, when you got something in this form you got a bracket and then it's two powers next to each other you essentially just multiply the two of the a so it'd be two times a which is 16 so you also be y to the 16 okay now c expand and simplify this double bracket 
Well, when you have double brackets, all you got to do is literally draw arrows because it helps. So I would say something like this. I always do x times x and x times minus 2 and then 9 times x and 9 times minus 2. Okay, and then just do it step by step. If you do that, you should have an x times x, which is x squared. x and minus 2 gives us minus 2x. 9 times x is plus 9x. And finally, 9 times minus 2 is minus 18. And as always, you always have to tidy up the middle two terms. Yeah, and if you're not sure what minus 2x plus 9x is, just put down your calculator. Write minus 2 plus 9, you're just going to get a nice 7x or plus or just 7 in your calculator. And therefore, writing the whole thing out, you therefore got x squared plus 7x minus 18. And yeah. And for D, factorize fully that expression. Okay, so to factorize something, you just got to look at both of these terms here. So the first part and the second part. And then just ask yourself, what do each of these things do like? How many P's are there? How many C's are there? And what time table is 1620 in? Well, let's do a step at, step at a time. For the numbers, we've got 1620. We can see that they're both in the 4 times table, yeah? So we just literally divide 4 out. So we put 4 outside. We look at the letter C and we ask ourselves, what is the maximum they both have? Well, this has a single C and it's got 4 C's. So they both have at least a C. That's for sure. Again, looking at P, you've got two parts of P, so P squared, and you've got three parts of P. So they both have at least two parts of P, so P squared. Okay, and then you just get the bracket open. And now, because you took out this common factor from both, because that's what you're doing, you're finding the common factor, now you just say, okay, if I divided this term by 4C and P squared, dividing 16 by 4, you just left with 4. Because you took out C from C to the power 4, you left with three parts of C. And because you took out the whole P squared, well, that's gone. Now, that's done. Put a plus. Now, look at the second term. We divided the first part by 4. So, 20 divided by 4 is 5. We took our C, so that's gone. And you took out two parts of P. So, P squared taken from P cubed. You just left with a single P. And yeah, guys, this should go here. And yeah, that's 3 done as well. Now, alright, number 4. So, complete the table of values for y equals x squared minus 3x minus 1. Alright, so, I'm not going to lie. These questions are really okay. Because you got a table of values. And all you got to do, guys, is just replace your x values um, with these numbers. Like, replace x here with minus 2. And then you just get an output of y. Okay? So, for example, in your calculator, we can say, we can write this. Replace x with minus 2. Wrap in a squared. Take away 3 times minus 2. Take away 1. Now, you kind of have to do this step by step here. So, just to show you guys, put this in a bracket, you get 4 plus 6, which is 10. Take away 1, and it gives you 9. So, that's where this value goes. Now, if you do the same thing with minus 1, replace x to minus 1, you're going to get 1 plus 3, which is 4. Take away 1, which is 3. The good thing is, again, because you've got a calculator, you don't have to do this. You just put this all in, and it will give you an answer. And for the rest of them, when x is 1, you've got 1. Take away 3, which is minus 2. Take away another 1, and it gives you minus 3. And finally, for 3, you've got 3 squared, which is 9. Take away another 3 times 3, which is 9 equal 9, which is 0. Take away 1, and you get minus 1. And yeah, I think that covers it all. Now, on the grid, draw the graph of basically what we just did for all values of x from minus 2 to positive 4. In other words, plot these coordinates in. So I might just actually zoom out a bit. Okay. So so let me just okay. So for the first part, minus two to nine. So we just go minus two and x and shoot up the nine. Should be about here, yeah. For the second part, we got uh, minus one to three, so minus one all the way to three. Next part would be zero to minus one. So you you start at zero and drop to minus one. So it should be here. So, oh yeah, this is going to be a quadratic graph because it's an x squared. So we're expecting literally a u shape. So the next one would be 1 and minus 3. So 1 across, drop to minus 3. And I think it starts shooting up soon. Yep, 2 is also minus 3. So move across, minus 3. Next one would be 3 minus 1. So over here. Uh, next one is 4 and 3. So here. And yeah. And now... I believe you just connect them here because it's a U-shaped graph. So connecting them, oh, this is going to be the hard one. Make sure you don't use a ruler, guys, because you have to do it freehand. Oh my god, that is so 
horrible. Yeah, it takes some time, but you just gotta be so careful. Okay, uh, okay, you know what? Oh, this is tough. It's tough to do on a computer. Ooh. Yeah. So just try your best and make it look as neat as possible, yeah? And try and actually hit the point, not like me, yeah? <laughs> wow, and that's it. That's literally the end of the question. You don't do nothing with it. So, moving on to five now. Becky has a biased six-sided dice. The table gives information about the probability that when a dice is thrown, it will land each number. Now, quick thing about probabilities, guys. We should always know, like, before we even look at a question related probability, we should always realize that the sum of all these probabilities always equals to one. So that's if you add them up here. Now, before we even do this question, let's just add them up right now. So we've got 2x plus all of this. So 2x plus 2x plus 3x plus an x. That's 4x. That's 7x. We have 8x in that equation. Adding the numbers here, you've got 0 0.18 plus 0 0.26. That actually gives us um, 0 0.44. So th this means that you've got 8x plus 0 0.44 must equal to 1, yeah? That means um, if we solve for x here yeah, before we even do this question, so we can subtract 0 0.44 across. So 1 take away 0.44 will give us 0 0.56. And then dividing that by 8 because you just want to find x in it. That means x equals 0 0.07. Yeah, so, yeah, and that's pretty much what it gives you. So technically, if you update a table, this is now 0 0.07. This is 3 lots of 0 0.7. So 3 times 0 0.07 is 0 0.21. This is 0 0.14. This is 0 0.14. Okay, good. Now, continuing the question, guys. It says Becky is going to throw the dice 200 times. Work out an estimate for the number of times that the dice will land on an even number. Okay, even number in this case refers to, like, what, well, 2, 4, and 6. So we can see that to get a 2, you've got an 18% chance. To get a 4, you've got 21, and 6 is 7. So that means the total chance would be 18 plus 21 plus 7. So you put that in the calculator, 18 plus 0 0.18 plus 0 0.21 plus 0 .07. Uh, you should have a total chance of 0 0.46. And of course, you're going to roll it 200 times. Just multiply that by 200, guys. Because you want to find the expected number of times she's going to get an even number. And therefore, just again, in your calculator, you should get a result of 92. And yeah, guys, that's literally done. That's all you got to do. And again, that's five done. And trust me, and see, and you bag a lot of marks. These kind of problems, they're not so bad because they kind of mix algebra with your numbers. And just knowing these little basic probabilities, like basic rules, like some of them equal one, you can kind of just get everything done instantly before you even start a question. Yeah. So next one, guys, number six now. All right. So six. The diagram shows a solid cuboid made from wood. Okay. So we've got 12, 8, 5. So this is your cuboid. Now the wood has a density of 0 0.7 grams per centimeter cube. Okay. So grams is a mass centimeter cube is a volume so actually density formulas like this guys the density equals the mass which is the gram over the volume which is the centimeter cube and it's nice because they actually kind of like indirectly mention it density equals grams over centimeter cube equals mass over volume now question is work out the mass of the cuboid well that's not bad that just involves rearranging this formula so to find mass multiply volume across so this means you've got volume times your Density equals your mass. Now, what is the volume? The volume of this cuboid is just literally you multiplying all these three numbers, yeah? So in your calculator, you're going to have 12 times 8 times 5. This means that the volume is 480 centimeter cube. And well, we know what the mass is. The mass is volume times density. So it would be 480 times 0 0.7. This means that the mass is now going to be 336 grams. Yeah, 